Maker. God, we honor you in this place on this morning. We tell you that we love you, Father. And we thank you for being who you are to us. Thank you for being our way maker. Thank you for being the one that covers our every thought, God, our every move, God. Thank you for being the one that leads and guides us to all truth, God. We have so God that your spirit will fall in this house on this morning. And that it will cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We ask, so God, that you will bless this service on today. Bless those who are watching on this morning. Bless every ministry, God, that's going forth in your great name today. And we pray next that souls will be delivered and set free today by your authority, God. We pray next, oh God, that souls will be added to your kingdom today. In the name of Jesus. That someone will give their lives unto your Savior today, God. In the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that lives will be changed and transformed. Even our mindset, God. In the name of Jesus. To be what you would have it to be. So we ask, oh God, that you continue to lead and guide us on this morning. And let your spirit, your true anointing, break every yoke in our lives. We thank you for miracles, oh God, signs and wonders, God. Hallelujah, being manifested each and every day in our lives, Lord. Just to wake up in our right minds is a miracle, God. And we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for added strength that you give, which is a miracle. We say thank you. We thank you that our minds are always stayed upon you, God. In the good and the bad, our minds are yet dedicated to you and your will, God. And we say thank you. Thank you for loving us as we are, God. Thank you for accepting us into your kingdom, God. Thank you for adopting us as your sons and daughters in the earth, God. We say thank you for your purpose and your plans concerning us. Now we lift up every man and woman of God that's going forth in your name. He will deliver and set through the Lord, God. Cover with your blood from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, God. Let them begin to speak your words and your words only. Let them sing praises unto you like never before, God. In the name of Jesus, that you are a great God. You are a mighty God. And you're always worthy to be praised, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So send your anointing now. In every ministry, God. Send your anointing, God. That will move mightily upon the earth today. In the name of Jesus. Father God, those who need faith and protection, God. Oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the hungry God feed the Lord in the name of Jesus. Even if you send us, God, we say yes, we'll go. We'll do what you will have us to do. Hallelujah, God. We dedicate our lives unto you. A repentant life, Lord, each and every day. And you will forgive us of all of our sins in words, thoughts, or in deeds, God. We repent even now in the name of Jesus. That when we sing praises unto you, that when we open our mouths and shout hallelujah, that it will be see God from a clean place in our lives, Lord, from a pure and holy place in our minds, God, in the name of Jesus. So set our hearts on fire today. Set our minds on fire today. Restore us, oh God, that we may give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, God, that comes from a sincere heart in our lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Purify us even now. Purify us even now, God, from the front of our heads to the souls of our very among us today. God, let your healing, God, take place even now. In the name of Jesus, search us all, God. You know what we're in need of. Meet every need. Every need in your children's lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And we even ask God that you would draw us closer to you. Draw us closer by your spirit, by your power. In the name of Jesus. And we'll forever glorify you. We'll forever respect your presence, God. We respect your presence. We respect your presence. We tell you that we love you. And we truly honor you for being our answer to every question. We thank you. We thank you. And we honor you. And we give you great praise today. In Jesus' great name. Come on, somebody give him great praise on this morning. I'll come on to the question of God that he's been very good to you. Come on, he's been good to you. He's been good to you. Hallelujah, we honor you this morning. Hallelujah, we welcome you to the house of restoration on today. 
amen, where we're allowing God to have his way in us the more, amen. Amen. At this time, we're just going to move forward into the things of the Lord on this morning. Amen. We just want God to be God in this place. Hallelujah. For you are welcome here, Jesus. And we welcome you with our hearts. We welcome you with the fruit of our lips. We welcome you with our hands lifted up, Father God. Hallelujah, Jesus. For there is no one like you nowhere. Come on, can you open your mouth and just worship him? Can you create an eyes of the God for your Savior?
and turn your ear to the sayings of wise. Mm -hmm. Apply your heart to what I teach, yeah. for it is pleasing when you keep them in your heart oh, yeah. and have all them ready on your lips so that your trust may be in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I teach you today, even you, have I not written Thank you, Lord. Have I not written? Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Have I not written? Ooh, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He said, have I not written? Glory to you, God. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Have I not written? Yes, you have. I'm just going to say it one more time. Yes, you have, God. Have I not written? Yes, you have.
No one can serve two masters. Mm -hmm. But either he will hate the one and love the other. Mm -hmm. Or else he will what? Be loyal to the one and despise the other. Mm -hmm. You cannot serve God and mammon. Yeah. That is God and money. Not in Father, how we bless you for this oh, yeah, yes, opportunity. Yes. Found worshiping in your house of prayer. Meet us here even the more. As we delve into the word of God on today. Yes, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. Help us. To understand what is being taught. Oh yes, help us, Lord. To apply it to our hearts and retain it. To share it with others abroad. Father, we thank you, God, for thank your you. spirit meeting us here. Yes, Lord. Thank you for sweet worship. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank we ask you. now, God, that you would impart unto us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that can only come from you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, oh God. So we avail ourselves to you, the Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And every believer shall be. Give your seats with a shout. Hallelujah. <coughs> Excuse me. We started a series some weeks back entitled Christ Came to Give Us Life, Not yes. Heaven. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Uh -huh. And that's understandable. But not everybody wants to live in a way that will actually get them to heaven. Right. But heaven is not what Jesus came to give us. He came to give us life and he came to give us life more abundantly. And when we understand that life more abundantly, it is eternal life. Oh yeah. Therefore heaven is a byproduct of that life. Uh -huh. Amen somebody. Amen. And on last week we had a subtitle, When the Bag Becomes Your Life. Mm -hmm. It unconsciously becomes your master. Uh -huh. When the bag becomes your life, it unconsciously becomes your master. Yeah. When all we see is money, how we can get it, when we can get it, when it becomes our focus, when it becomes our drive, when we breathe it, we eat it, we sleep, Nothing else in life matters. It's obvious that we have been so preoccupied with money and finances that it has eroded the very core of who we are from a spiritual perspective. Mm. The Bible declares that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Mm -hmm. That he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. That whatsoever we have need of, he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. So that money should not become our focus. Right. Our focus should become God. Mm -hmm. Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the way. Yeah, kingdom of God. God. And all of his righteousness. Yeah. And then all of these things shall be added, added unto you. Yes. Yeah. It comes as a result of seeking him, seeking his righteous way of doing things. When we talk about the kingdom of God, amen, we're talking about the rule of God, uh -huh. the reign of God in our hearts, in our minds, in our soul, in our spirit, man, understanding that we are under the rule of the kingdom. Yes. That's why he says to us, do not be conformed to this world. Yes. Amen. Because when you conform to this world, you conform to the dictates of this world, amen. But he said, be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. Yeah. And so today, as we begin to walk a little further into this particular series, I want us to understand that God is not saying to us that he doesn't want us to have money. That's not what he's saying. And again, it would be wrong of me to preach and teach that God does not want us to have money. We heard last week, amen, and Ecclesiastes 10, that money does what? It answers all things. Mm -hmm. A 
All right, it answers all the things. I gave you the illustration that this tender no amen is good for not only private, but public Perfect. use. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's not that God does, uh, does not have uh, wants to have money. God doesn't want money to have us. Yeah. Come on, yeah. come on. And so many people are after money. They're after everything that will benefit them on this side, but they don't see the other side. Right, right. So it's about keeping in your mind the thing that will be lasting. Mm -hmm. What's going to be left after you go? It is certain that we brought nothing into this world. Yeah. And we will take nothing out of this world. Uh -huh. Naked we came in, and naked we shall what? We shall return. Uh -huh. Jesus is teaching us an important lesson to not get so carried away with money that you forget about your soul. Yeah, yeah. To not get so carried away with money that you don't understand that there is a heaven to gain. And when you get to the point where money becomes your focus, it becomes your master. You will do any and everything to get it. And it doesn't matter whether it is a, in a private sector or whether it is in the public sector. You will do any and everything to get money. The culture is telling you to chase the bag. Go get the bag. It doesn't matter how you get the bag. Just go get the bag. Come on. Come on. And when that becomes your focus, Again, it erodes your spiritual uh, status as it relates to you seeking God. Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. It is not like the Lord don't know what you have need of. Right, right. Come on. He is not oblivious to where you are right now in your life. Even if your back is up against the wall right now and your bills need to be paid, God knows exactly yeah. what you have need of. Yeah. The Bible says before you even ask. Come on. He knows what you have need of, but the question is, have we been asking? And sometimes we ask, we ask amiss, and the Bible says that we may do that thing that is unrighteous, amen, that we may consume it upon the lust of our flesh. He says, ask and it shall be given. Knock and the door will be open. Mm -hmm. Seek and you will find. Yeah. Every one of us in here can attest to the fact that at one point in time in our life, once upon a time in our life, we was out there in the bag. Mm-hmm. Come on. Uh, Y'all can got to say. <laughs> By any means necessary. Amen. And even if you knew it was wrong, amen, somebody, at that moment it was right to have. Y'all can talk about me. Come on, tell the truth. And the truth be told, <laughs> many of us even still today. Yeah are after the bag and getting things illegally right? and asking God to bless it. Bless it. You hear me? Come on. I'm going to show us something in the text that is going to be so profound and mm -hmm. important for us to understand that you can't get by wrong means uh -huh. and bring it in and give it to God and ask him to bless it and increase it. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. And so many of us do it and think that it is all right. Mm -hmm. No. It's become your master. Help today. And God is simply saying, you can't serve me and the money, but you can serve me with the money. Y'all, 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 y'all to hear me. He says, you can't serve me and money, but you can serve me with the money. And a lot of times, again, I'll say it again, that we trust God for money, but we don't trust him with the money. Yeah. God, I'm going to trust you to give me this money, but when I get the money, I can't trust you with it. And this is what we do. We pray for increase, increase. We pray for promotion. It doesn't come from the east. It doesn't come from the west, but it comes from the Lord. And when God elevates you and he promotes you, amen, somebody, according to the book of Ecclesiastes, fifth chapter, whatever value you made to God, he says, repay it. Yeah. He said, don't let your lips say it was a mistake. Because God is looking for us to honor every vow in which we have made to him. He said, it is better not to vow yeah. than to vow and not pay what you have vowed. That's right. That's so many times God elevates us and he increases us. 
And he begins to enlarge our territory. And we make promises to God. God, if you do this to me, I promise you, God, I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to pay my tithe. I'm going to give to people. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. And then the moment God increases us, on, when we on. start seeing more zeros, <laughs> come on. We start forgetting what we have promised. Uh -huh. Such as the rich fool. Mm. Mm. So mm -hmm. take it easy. Mm. Pull down your old bones and be a new. Mm -hmm. Drink, eat, and be merry. Mm. Jesus says, fool. Yes. This yes. night. Yes, yes. Your soul is required of you. Who are you going to leave all this to? Right. Do you understand that no matter how much money you amass to yourself, no matter how many things you amass to yourself in this earth, when you close your eyes, you can't take it with you. That's right. And you worship it. Mm. And you've allowed it to dictate your way. You've allowed it to get into your heart and master you. Then you die hmm. and stand before an eternal God who has been simply knocking at the door uh -huh. all of your temporal existence, mm -hmm. asking to come in and sup with you and you with him. My Lord. But you were too busy carrying your duckies. Hmm. Sometimes money only magnifies who we really are. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Some of us can't handle a lot of money. That's why yeah. God never gives it to us. Right. You can pray to become a millionaire and a billionaire. God said, no, I got your best interest at heart. Hmm. I can't give it to you because I know your heart going to change. Yeah, yeah. I can't give it to you. Why? Because I understand you ain't never had. And so many times what God will do, God will gradually give you increase. Right, right. Just to see how you handle the gradually. You've been used to making twenty-seven thousand a year. Then God give you three thousand extra. Now you got thirty thousand dollars. Amen. You be like, Lord, thank you, God, for the raise. Right. Then all of a sudden, yeah. since you've been faithful over a few things, yeah. God takes you up and makes the rule over a little bit more, yeah. and He give you forty thousand a year. And you say, God, you know, I thank you for that, God. God, <laughs> you somebody, God, yeah. you somebody, God, am somebody. You hear me? And then all of a sudden, He give you eighty thousand. My, my. Come on. It's hard my. to jump from giving God 4,000 <laughs> to 8,000. Wow. Lord, you know, I said I was going to buy this new house, and, 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 and I need to furnish it. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I need to make sure that, you know, uh, I can keep my condo paid, and this is that. Other. Watch this. God said, watch this. Watch this. If I give you more. It's not because you deserved it. My, my. I give you more to test your stewardship. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the truth be told, all of us know that we are undeserving of what we do have. Right. The little that we do have, yeah. we're undeserving of. So God doesn't give it to you based on the fact that you deserve it. Right. He gives it to you based on the fact that you are a good steward. I told you last week. So he that does not have what he does have mm -hmm. will be taken from him and given to he who does have. Right. And he shall have more. It seems wrong, but God is saying the reason I am giving it to him because he is a good steward over what I have given him. You've taken your one talent, your one gift, and you place it in the ground and said it's irrelevant, it's insignificant, and I can't do nothing with it. And you're looking at what everybody else is doing and what God is doing and everybody but God says, work what's in your hand. Moses, what's in your hand? Yeah. Yeah. You keep talking about what you can't do, Moses. You keep talking about stuttering lip. Moses, what's in your hand? You got a rod in your hand. Yeah. Use what's in your hands. Okay. And the reason many of us cannot use what's in our hands is because we don't use what's in our hand. My. In order for your hands to work, your head got to work. Yes, sir. And you gotta be able to pull things together consciously. Yeah. So that you'll understand that God's not given to you for the sake of just giving to you. Abraham, I'll bless those who bless you. Yeah, it's word. Blessings I help bless, bless you. Uh -huh. Multiplying I help Multiply. 
multiplied you. Yeah. So God says, there is something I want to do in you. Mm -hmm. But I can't do it for you until I do it in you. Yeah. Yeah. Lord yeah. God, have yeah. mercy. Some of you keep asking God to do it for you. God says, I can't do it for you until I do it in you. Have your way. Let me do it in you, and when I do it in you, I'm doing it for you. Yeah, yes, yes. Thank Don't you, Lord. chase money. Thank you, Lord. Money is looking for you. All right, all right. Some of y'all don't get it. All right. Money is looking for you. Yes, yes. Money should become your servant, not your master. That's right. That's right. If it's a means to an end. Right. You don't serve it. It should serve you. Uh -huh. That's right. And so when the bag becomes your life, it unconsciously becomes your master. And so many people are chasing money. My. And the Bible says the love of money. Mm. Money is not evil. The love of it. The love of it. It's the root mm -hmm. of all evil. If you ask the average person today what they are after, no doubt they will say success mm -hmm. and happiness. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Average uh -huh. person. Uh -huh. Success yeah. and happiness. A spinoff of the American dream. <laughs> Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong on, with per se success. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. It's when they become your only focus. Right, right. Nothing is wrong with them. Right. It's when they become your only focus. God gave you, bless me with increase. But I ain't working up on Sunday to worship you. That's the only day I got off. My, my. Y'all don't want to talk to me, okay. Let me, let me, let me help myself. <laughs> God, I don't mean no harm. I, I have worked 75 hours all week long. Mm -hmm. And I ain't got two to give you on Sunday morning. My mind. Mm -hmm. I can't let you borrow an hour and a half, God. Mm -hmm. You break into my rest. <laughs> mm -hmm. And God says, okay. Well, since you don't have time to come worship me, let me touch your strength. Oh my. Let me touch your power. Mm -hmm. The Bible says it is the Lord who's giving you power. Wow. Who's giving you strength to go get with. That's right. It amazes me that when we don't have health, we don't see wealth. Right. 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 <laughs> but the moment we have health, we go out the wealth. But we don't seek the wealth of the kingdom of God. Right. And understand and watch this, that God can give us more than we could ever give with our own hands. That no matter what amount of money is offered unto you, God still has the ability to, to surpass it on every level. Somebody shall be, can I become your only focus? Can I become your only focus? When financial and capital gain drives you with an unrelenting force that it causes you to spin your past, speed rather, past your investment in your immaterial part of who you are. That it kidnaps conviction and silences the conscience. My Lord. That you get so much money, watch this, that you're speeding past the immaterial part of who you are. What's the immaterial part of you? Mm -hmm. The part of you that is not material, your soul, mm -hmm. your spirit. That's why when you give up the ghost, the material part of who you are drops right. back to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. It's the part of you that cannot be seen that needs the more investing in. Page now. The part of you that people cannot lay their eyes on. The, the part of you that is not tangible to the natural man. Mm -hmm. That's the part of you that needs to be invested in the more. When you eat, sleep, drink, dream, talk, and breathe money, it is an indication that your love for it supersedes everything else in your life. Hmm. Every time you turn around, you're just talking about money. We need money. But we need not worship it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
as the word of God tells us in Timothy, 1 Timothy 6 and 10. Y'all bear with me. Be with me for a minute. 1 Timothy 6 and 10. For the love of mine. <coughs> Excuse me. Is the what? Word of all me. For which some have strayed from the faith in their what? Greediness. Some money makes you want more money. Right. The moment you start seeing money just coming, mm -hmm. and if you're not rooted and grounded in sound theology, right. if you're not rooted and grounded in the spirit, you start getting greedy. Right, right. And the more you get, the more you want. Uh -huh. And it causes you to stray from the faith mm -hmm. and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. The pursuit of earthly riches will always interfere with the promise of eternal riches. Good. Can I say it one more time? Yeah. The pursuit of earthly riches will always interfere with the promise of eternal riches. Mm -hmm. If all you're seeking is what you see, you'll never be able to attain that in which God has promised you. Right. You can't just seek what you see down here because this is going to perish. Mm -hmm. It interferes with our eternal promise, the eternal riches. As Jesus says in our text, no man can serve two masters, for either he will do what? Hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Double riches create a divided heart. Yeah. Double riches. Create a divided heart. You can't stand in the world and in the church. Come on now. You can't sell dope. Oh, God, God have mercy. Come on, help. You, you can't pimp. Lord, Lord, you, you, you can't shake. Yo, yo, you, you can't rob. You can't gamble. Okay. You can't steal. You can't do that over here and gain riches and then come over here and try to get the riches of the kingdom. It creates a divided heart. Right. right. That's why he said, you can't serve me and the world. Right, right. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Double riches create a divided heart. You're going to have to choose whom you're going to be loyal to. Yeah. God or money. Yeah. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. As I shared with you last week, the key to obedience and eternal life is to invest your life in that which will last. <laughs> the key to obedience and eternal life is to invest your life in that which will last. What's going to last? Your soul. Paul says this, the outward man what? Perish day by day. But the inward man is what? Renewed day by day. I don't care how much you fix this up, it's dying. Yeah. It's perishing. It's yeah. fleeting. People don't come to God until there's a crisis. Mm -hmm. And that's all right. Because God can handle crisis Christians. <laughs> come on, sir. But the problem with people who come to God in times of crisis is that they leave him in times of come. Oh, yes. And you got to be careful. We're coming to God when something is wrong and making vows and promises and then all of a sudden about faith. Uh -huh. You go in a different direction. I know also well. Uh -huh. I got to the point where I got tired of just saying, Lord, I promise I won't do it more. God, just give me that. I got tired of that. Uh -huh. Then one day I matured and woke up and said, God, thank you. Uh -huh. I ain't got to look over my back no more. Yeah. God, thank you. Uh -huh. I ain't got to cry no more. Thank you. I've matured. Yeah. Why? Because now I'm in a place that even though I see it jockeying and vying for my attention, mm -hmm. I'm mature enough to say no. Right. Right. Oh, wow. Right. Right. The same temptation, mm -hmm. but a different response. Right. Yeah, come on. Come on. What used to have its hooks in me no longer has its hooks in me. Right. Doesn't mean that it don't whisper in here. Right, 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 right. 
We are in this world, but we're not of uh, this world. Doesn't mean that we're not gonna go through, doesn't mean that we're not gonna be tilted. Jesus, the Bible says, even with the temptation, he'll make up. That's the good thing. I will not allow you to be tempted above that in which you are able to handle. Glory to God. You're gonna be tempted. Yes. But when I see it's too much, I'm gonna step in. Y'all ain't talking to me. Come on. That's the difference. Remember Jesus' teaching on the cost of discipleship. Mm -hmm. It costs to follow Jesus. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It costs to follow Jesus. Yes, it does. You think it don't? Yes, You're not truly following. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it ain't costing you something, mm -hmm. y'all ain't talking to me. Mm -hmm. Jesus says in Mark 8 and 34 through 38, when he called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, watch this, whosoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself. And do what? Take up his cross. And do what? Follow me. Don't touch the cross until you deny yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You got to take you off and robe yourself with me. Uh -huh. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. Whosoever desires to save his life will do what? Lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake, not just for my sake, and the gospel's sake. Yeah. We're going through that right now. People don't want to hear the gospel. Right, right. And the gospel's sake. We'll save it. Mm -hmm. For what shall a prophet of man to gain the world, the whole world, mm -hmm. and lose his soul? But what then can a man give in exchange for his soul? For whosoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous, sinful generation of him, the Son of Man also shall be ashamed when he comes in his glory with the holy angels. You gotta ask yourself a question. Have I done all that God has called me to do with all that he's provided into my hands? My. I know how it is to say, God, I'm just going to have to skim off the top and give you a little something. Mm. God says, okay, well, <laughs> since you tempted me, <laughs> I can't move until you pay the rent. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> See, we, we think, you know, come, I, I remember uh, somebody said, man, Pastor, man, you know what I'm saying, man? Uh, man, God good, man. He's been blessing me. I stopped making the extra money. I said, damn, I can't get God all this, man. <laughs> okay. Watch this. It's not because you deserve God. It's because he's testing your stewardship. Yeah. 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 If you can't handle more, don't pray for don't more. Don't pray for more. That's right. That's good. Don't do it. That's good. Because God will give you more to see if you can handle more. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. It is important that we understand that. Amen, amen. Somebody shout, God has chosen me for more. God has chosen God me for more. more. Amen. This leads me to my next, my next point. Somebody shout, Judas. Judas. I got some time for y'all. It's just 10.03, praise God. Mm -hmm. Judas. Believe it or not, there are more Judas in the church than we know. Yeah, say it. At this point. Mm -hmm. Today. But the difference between the Judas of Jesus' day and the Judas of today mm -hmm. is that Jesus chose his Judas. Mm -hmm. Today's Judas have chosen our Lord. Mm -hmm. My mind. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. And God knows every Judas. Mm -hmm. He knows every Judas. Amen. Somebody. But Judas is not just one who betrays Jesus. Right. A Judas is one who has never really accepted him. Right. Right. They follow him, but have not accepted him. Right. Judas walked with Jesus the whole time and had a shallow and surface faith in Christ. Judas was a thief, and Jesus made him a treasure. Right. <laughs> right. Ain't that amazing? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give a robe. <laughs> Power over the money. Yeah. Have you ever wondered? 
if, 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 if Judas was the treasure and he had the money, no, he was a thief. Have you ever wondered why Jesus had to send Peter to the water to get taxes out of fish mouth? Fish mouth. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Come on. Because the Bible said that Judas often yes. stuck his hand in the bag. Yes. Just think about it. God has entrusted you with all this money. Mm -hmm. And you say, God, well, I ain't got this. God said, you just, just took it and put it over there. Not mm -hmm. mine. It, it's, it's over there. Mm -hmm. No, see, that's my stash, God. <laughs> God said, oh, okay. So, you gonna give me what's left. And you're going to keep all that. See, God said, look, little becomes much in my hand. Oh, yes. True. God in this with contentment, Paul says, yes. is great, great gain. Gain. I've learned to be content. Whatever. And whatever state yes, I am. I gave y'all yes, the illustration God. while everybody else had cable. We didn't have cable. We had DVD. Yes. We were cool with the antenna. And if somebody called and said, you watching the game tonight? No, not tonight, man. I'm going to do something else tonight, you know. But when God elevates you and he starts trusting you with what he gives you, God can give you more. That's right. That's right. In fact, he wants to give you more. Absolutely. But it's how we handle it. Absolutely. And so watch this. The Bible tells us. In 1 John 2 and 15 through 17, love not this world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I've read that so many times, but this time it just jumped out at me. He says, if any man love this world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in this world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the power of life. It's not of the Father, but of the world. Yeah. And the world does what? Pass it away, right. and the lust thereof. But he that doth the will of God, I love this, abides forever. Somebody shout Judas. Judas. Judas could not bring himself to be devoted to Jesus. Some will say because he was divided. I beg to differ and say because he had decided. Mm. Mm. Can I say that one more time? Yeah. Some would say Judas did not fully devote himself to Jesus because he was divided. I say he had decided. In other words, he never decided to devote himself to Jesus. Right. Judas was never divided. He was always decided. He made a decision not to follow God but rather to follow his own vain heart. Jesus chose Judas and made him a treasurer, knowing that he was a thief. Right. Sometimes God will choose a problem, wow. give it a promise, wow. and <laughs> sit back and watch it forfeit purpose. Sir, wow. sir. Can I say it one more time? That's very good. Sometimes God will choose a problem, yeah. give it a promise, and sit back and watch it forfeit purpose. Sometimes God know you jacked up, but will give you a promise to heal you, save you, and pull you out. And sit back and watch you forfeit everything he's promised you. Because he know what's in you. He knew what was in Ahab, but yet Ahab was the king. That's why he said to those kings of Israel, he says, I will cut off him that pisseth against the wall. Right. What is he saying? There will be no male in your lineage because of the wickedness that continues to proceed from you. You understand that? For all that is in this world, it's the lust of the flesh, lust of the pride of life. Mm -hmm. And the love of the Father is not in him. Right. Judas just could not bring himself to do that. The issue is never, listen to what I'm about to tell you. The issue is never with the creator. The 
the issue is always with the creation. Right. When we fail to fulfill and accomplish what we are created to do, the failure will always roll back upon us. We used to say, there is no failure. There is no failure. There is no failure. There is no failure in God. Right. Y'all remember that? Yes. There is no failure in God. The failure is in us. Yes. But failure is not a human being. It is a state of being. Yes. 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 That when you fail, you can get up. Yes. Dust yourself off and get back in line. Thank you, Lord. Judas is the epitome of rejected grace. <laughs> Judas is the epitome of rejected grace. Here it is, and he rejects it. Here's the perfect example of what not to do as a follower of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Shallow and superficial faith in Jesus is as dangerous as playing a Russian roulette with a gun held in your head. Can I say it again? Yes. Shallow and superficial faith in Jesus is as dangerous as playing a Russian roulette with a gun held to your head. Because you're going into eternity without Christ. Right. You go to church, but you have not committed. Uh -huh. You sing on the worship team, but you have not committed. Uh -huh. You preach the word, but you have not committed. Uh -huh. You are a gatekeeper, but you have not right. committed. Come you on. pay your tithes, but you have not committed. You bring visitors to church, but you have not committed. Right. You tell people you love them, but you have not committed. You do all of this stuff in his name, but you have not committed. I have never known you, he says. My God. My God. Not all to say, Lord, Lord. Share it there. He says, I never knew you. Imagine the fact that Judas walked with Jesus all that time. And he never, never knew Jesus. Him. My Lord. Jesus seen, a uh, uh, Judas rather seen how people would come and try to kill Jesus. And Jesus just slipped away. Jesus. How did you become the person who betrayed him? My mind. Hmm. Hmm. You better check what's in your heart. Yes. yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. Psalms 41 and 9 declares, even my own familiar, friend, and whom I trusted, uh -huh. who ate my bread, uh -huh. has lifted his heel up against me. Yes, yes. Oh, God have mercy. Mm. Yeah. It was already prophesied mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that he would do this because he loved money mm -hmm. more than he loved life. Some of us can go after money, amen, and go after it with all that we have. In the moment, there ain't no more overtime. Lord have mercy, talk to me. And the moment they couldn't back house, talk to me, huh? And the moment they got a downsize, and you can't no longer be in your position, you can work at the company, but you gotta take a pay cut. And because we've been spinning, 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 spinning. Now it's that much more harder for us to survive because we weren't good stewards. Yeah. Talking to a young man yesterday and, and a young man the day before yesterday, I had to tell both of them, listen, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much you save. How much you save. True. You keep talking about I get paid Friday. Thursday coming. <laughs> Wednesday coming. Right. Yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Monday. You don't know what's going to happen. That's right. I don't know. If you've ever been in a position where you don't save some money to pay this bill and to do this, and then all of a sudden the car break down. Right. The refrigerator go out. God have yeah. mercy. Yeah. You can't be in no house without no refrigerator. No, sir. You gotta eat. And then you just Spend money to get a refrigerator full of food. You gotta hurry up. You didn't hear what I said. Uh, hurry up. Right. And get that food on ice. <laughs> right. But praise God if it breaks down in the winter because you're taking everything outside. Oh, <laughs> 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 so y'all ain't from the hood. Y'all 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 don't know how to preserve nothing. <laughs> you hear me? Every 
everything. Amen, somebody. So it's about how you save and preserve. I can have it. Well, I'm saving right. Security. Make you feel good. You understand? And then when something unexpected <laughs> jump out at me, I just say, God, thank you that I had it. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to spin it. But God, it's better to have and not need than to need. And that money ain't here to help you. Come on, sir. <laughs> You heard this show late? <laughs> From the hall. That's one. That's one. <laughs> I'm struggling myself. <laughs> Amen, somebody? So it's important that we learn how to save. All right? We're going to read just a little bit. Amen? I want y'all to walk with me. Y'all ready? Yeah. We're going to do like the old church. Luke 22 and 1 through 6. Lady baby. Amen. Sister Dave. John 13 and 2. Y'all gonna read with me? Elijah John 12, 4 through 6. Malone, Matthew 27, 3 through 5. Amen. Bonnie, John 17, 12. Are y'all ready? Get your glasses on, so come on. <laughs> Luke 22, 1 through 6. Luke 20. 22, lady. 1 through 6. All right. Uh huh. 22, 1 through 6. Mm hmm. Now the festival of unleavened bread, called the Passover, was approaching, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus. They were looking for some way mm -hmm. to kill Jesus. Mm -hmm. These are the chief priests, mm -hmm. all of the rulers of the people. Mm -hmm. All right, come on. For they were afraid <clears throat> of the people. They were afraid of the people. In other words, we can't kill him during the Passover. If we kill him during the Passover, they're going to kill us. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on. Then Satan answered Jesus. Uh oh, no, no, he didn't hear Jesus. Judas. All right, y'all hear that? My bad. My bad. <laughs> then Satan entered who? Judas. Watch this. What is he saying? They were looking for a way to kill Jesus, mm -hmm. but they were afraid because they thought that the people would do what? Kill them. Uh -huh. But then Satan mm -hmm. gave them an opportunity. Yes. What did he do? He then, entered Judas. Uh -huh. Read, then Satan entered Judas, mm -hmm. one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priest and the officer of the temple guard <coughs> and discussed with them how he might be betrayed Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. <coughs> he consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. After that man, mm -hmm. walking with Jesus. Walking with heaven, mm -hmm. walking with power, seeing miracles. Mm -hmm. But yet money was his focus more than life. Mm -hmm. All right, let's read. John 13 and 2, who got that? And suffer being envy, the devil of heaven, not put into the heart of Judas his brother, find the son to be pregnant. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Now the devil has entered into his heart. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. If you don't check your heart, you'll wind up doing things and saying things, watch this, True. that is not becoming. True. Out of the abundance of the heart does the what? Mouth speak. He says, out of the heart comes adulterers and fornications and murders and all. Out of your heart. Mm -hmm. Not what's going down into you, what you eat is defiling you. It's what's coming out of your heart. Yeah. 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 They found occasion through Judas because Satan entered him. Right. You better be careful who you give access to your heart. Absolutely. Oh, 
The enemy entered his heart. The Bible says with all diligence, mm -hmm. you got to keep and protect your heart. Yes. All right, read. John 12, 4 through 6. But Judas is cut, the disciple who will soon betray him, mm -hmm. said that person was worth a year's wages. Uh-huh. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Uh-huh. Not that he cared for the Stop. poor. Stop. Not that he what? Care for the Say it again. Poor. That he cared for the poor. But? He was a thief. Right. <laughs> Since he was in charge of the disciples' money, uh -huh. he often stole some for himself. Yeah. Wow. Now here is this lady doing something prophetically that she don't even know. Within a week's time, Jesus is going to be dead. Mm -hmm. One of the rituals for Jews is to prepare the body with essential oils and perfumes. Yes. Yeah. And she is preparing his body. She's rubbing his feet with this uh, perfume and rubbing it with her hair. And he's looking and said, man, look, we could have took this and gave it to the poor. Not that he cared about the poor, but because he wanted the money, he knew what he could sell it for. Right. The Bible said not that he cared because often he reached down into the bag and stole the money. And Jesus says, the poor <laughs> but I won't be with you. Amen, right. somebody. Amen. Come on. Who's got next? Matthew 27. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with, some, with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver mm -hmm. to the priest and, to, and the elders. I have sinned, he said, <laughs> for I have betrayed innocent blood. Mm -hmm. What is that to us, they replied? Mm -hmm. This is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Judas was remorseful, mm. not repentant. Mm. Right. Mm. There is a difference between feeling remorse, right. acknowledging that he sinned, mm -hmm. but did not repent for his right. sin. Which means now he took matters into his own hands. Uh -huh. First John 1 and 9, if we what? Confess our sins. God is faithful and just to do what? Forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all of us. So all Judas had to do was what? Repent. Uh -huh. But he took matters into his own hands. And he went and did what? He hanged himself. Now this is important. Mm -hmm. Because I want to give you this. Uh, uh, who want to read for me? Give me a volunteer. Raise your hand. Sell, I can't let you read all right. <laughs> Don't be Wait. grown, people. Walk and get your Bible. He will sit in the corner like that. Get your Bible. <laughs> Do the run. Twenty-three, because I want to. I want to give you something. All right, on this particular scripture. Do the run. Twenty-three and seventeen through eighteen. Okay. Well, I want you to read the latter part of. Your text, which, which would be 4 and 5, verse 4 and 5. Before she reads, Deuteronomy 23, 17 through 18 for you, Sister Walt. All right? Sister Malone, I want you to read verses 4 and 5 again. You got it? Matthew 27? All right, verse 4 and 5. I want to make I want, I want to make clear what is that to us they reply mm. what's next that is your responsibility uh-huh so Judas threw the money into the temple and left all right then he went away and hanged himself all right now on the other side of that they could not take that money mm -hmm. and put it back in the treasury because it was considered <laughs> blood money so they paid for a field called the potter's field, which they were burying strangers and people who did not have family in that field. Mm. Why was it the potter's field? Because that's the field where potters went and they dug out clay. Mm -hmm. 
out of the field. So it was holes in the field already. So it would be easy for them to do what? Bury people in the field. So Jesus was considered a stranger. Wow. And they was going to bury him there. All right, blood money. All right, but this is where they get this from. All right, they borrowed from a miscellaneous law out of the book of Deuteronomy. Now, I want to explain this to you real fast. Come on. Read it out. Yes, she's standing up like the Holy Church. Come on. There shall be no more of the daughters of Israel uh -huh. of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore of the, or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord, mm -hmm. that God or any that, mm -hmm. for even both these are abominations unto the Lord, that God. Mm -hmm. All right, some of y'all are wondering, what in the world they got to do anything with this text? They got a whole lot to do. So when we look at the comparison thereof, we understand, number one, Jesus was considered a person who was a blasphemer. Being a man, making himself what? Equal to God. Which means as a blasphemer, you become an abomination. You see that? So what the chief priest did was they borrowed from the miscellaneous laws of Israel, knowing that if there was a whore, a harlot, right. amen, or a dog, a male sodomite, a male prostitute, all right, that's what he was uh, 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 seen as, all right, in this miscellaneous law. How do we tie all of this together? We tie all of this together in that we understand. During that time, the Canaanites, they worshiped Ashtoreth and, 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 and Bela, Baal and all of those gods, all right? But what happened was, during that time, you had those harlots, those prostitutes, and those male sodomites, who, if they went out and they worked and they were paid for their hire, they felt within themselves in the cultic tradition that they should give part of their hire to their God. So they sacrificed it mm. to their God. And so it was said that they brought that practice. You remember the Canaanites were not to be with the Israelites, all right? But they brought that practice over into Israel, and they were taking the hire, amen, as prostitutes, amen, and bringing it to the house of God. Then I tell you, you can't take unrighteous men, Lord have mercy, and bring it to the household of faith right. and ask God to bless it and breathe on. Right. And the reason was because they had a ketamite. Amen. That was a little boy prostitute who was used for the male prostitute. Amen. A grown man. No, that's that's, that's uh -huh. just the stuff that was going on. And the reason they considered the man a prostitute, a, a dog brother, was because of as a sodomite, amen, he was considered to be lower than a dog. Also, you got to realize, even though in that time, Egyptians worshipped the dog. So that you get this understanding that when we get into the New Testament, the Bible says that a Canaanite woman came to Jesus and said, heal my daughter. And Jesus said, it ain't good to give the children bread to a dog. The Bible says, even if we have escaped the pollutions of this world, we're like a what? A hog that goes back in a water in its mire and a dog has returned to his vomit. Right. You get it? Yes. So what he is saying in contrast, that we see in the Old Testament through cultic religious, religious practice because you had cult, cult, cultic uh, 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 prostitute leaders who were considered the pastors mm. that was even paying the prostitutes and being paid, y'all ain't talking to me, to have sex with one another. And they were dedicating this money and these things to ritual. Let, let me tell you something. That's why you got to be careful with certain sex acts and all that stuff. Because any time that you have this stuff uh, going on, it is literally uh, uh, into idol worship, mm -hmm. idolatry. Right. You worship the thing. That's what the Bible says. You do worship the creation more than the creator. Yeah. Romans 1, go read it. But they were contrasting this. How that they were taking this money that was unrighteous yeah. and dedicated it to God and put it in, in the temple treasure mm -hmm. over against Jesus who was sold out for blood money mm -hmm. that I can't take this blood money now and put it back in the treasury because I sold it out. I sold them out. You see, you see the contrast? Mm -hmm. So it's important that we know this, amen, and, and understand that when you start getting into making money, you better trace that money. My. 
Somebody come give you some money. Somebody said, give you a hundred thousand dollars. Where does this come from? Don't worry about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> come might be some ink on this money that ain't bullshit. My. Somebody come give you a million dollars. Because if you took this money from somebody and they trace this money back to me, come tell you something. I'm going to go buy me a house. <laughs> <laughs> Miss y'all over here. Because you know, you finna give them more, you, you give it everybody away. How you get a million dollars all of a sudden? You can't drop that in your bank account. <laughs> Fans coming real fast. They tell you, look, $20,000, just hold on to it for about a year. A year? Yeah. Why? All right, well, just, just, just put $500 a piece, you know, every two weeks. Every two weeks? <laughs> What's wrong? Because <laughs> the moment you pull 10 out your bank account, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> got to report you. Y'all ain't talking to me. Ooh. And it's your money. No. Somebody said, trace the money. Trace the money. I just want to give y'all that all right real fast. Somebody read for me John 17 and 12. While I was with them, I was checking them. That's right. And kept them safe. By that, by that name you gave me. Mm -hmm. None has lost except except the one doomed to destruction that scripture will be for you. Jesus says, all that you have given me, I still have. Mm -hmm. None of them are lost mm -hmm. except mm -hmm. the son of perdition. Mm -hmm. That's Judas. Mm -hmm. That the scripture may be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Acts 1 and 18 declares, now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. Write this down and we'll leave it. You go home and read it in your spare time. John 6, 67 through 71. He said, you know, just in passing, he asked the disciples, are you going to leave? Also, Peter says, what should we do? You have the words of life. And Jesus said, did not I choose all 12 of y'all and one of y'all is a devil? In closing, let me say this. Be careful that you're not going around externally looking righteous. Wow. But internally unrighteous. Oh, my Lord. Don't, don't, don't look like you got it together on the outside. But inside you know you messed up. That's how we end up falsifying our faith in Christ. Oh, yeah. A superficial faith. A shallow and a surface faith. That's, that's what Judas had. Just, just think about it. Judas never had the confession of Peter. Peter denied Jesus. The difference between Peter and Judas is that after Peter denied Jesus and he heard the rooster crow, the Bible says he repented. Don't get so far in your sins that you feel like you can't be forgiven. Jesus says, all sin and all manner of blasphemies will be forgiven except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. It won't be forgiven in this life or the life to come. And during that time, they were attributing blasphemy is to attribute the acts and the power of God to the devil. They said Jesus was casting out the demons by the chief spirit, Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. Comes from the Hebrew buzz, which is flies buzzing around waste. Mm -hmm. Beelzebub. 
and to reject Jesus as the Son of God, as God incarnate. That's blasphemy. And it cannot be forgiven in this life of Allah. The life to come. And, 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 and Paul said this, and it confused me when I first read it, but as I begin to read that God began to open my eyes to it, Paul said, listen, I made men blaspheme the name of God. I blasphemed, he said, the name of God. God doesn't have a problem. He can handle you blaspheming his name when you're unknowledgeable of who he really is. But when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, the life-giving source, the life-giving force of God, yes. he's our helper, he's our paraclete, God says, All these things were left on record for our learning. Yes. Examples. Thank you. How we should be. Everybody say to me. Don't let money become your master. Yeah. Somebody shout that with me. Don't let money become your master. Don't let money become your master. It's easy to be mastered by money. I'm telling you. God's not ever going to let you get in a place where you got to turn and do something unrighteous to make ends meet. And if we succumb to that, it's because we have not totally trusted him. Amen, somebody. God wants you to have what you want to have. It's about patience. about not looking at what somebody else is doing or what somebody else has. Yeah. Just having patience to wait on God. I know what it is to wait on God. My wife and I can tell you, we know what it is to wait on God. Yeah. To have to suffer in silence and cry when you don't have. Yeah. Wondering, asking God, when are things going to change, God? When, when, when is our change going to come? almost as if God says nothing. It's not that he's not speaking and that he's not moving. He's just not saying what you want to hear. Yeah. But if you stick with him, I promise you, he'll keep it. Come on, clap your hands on your God. Pray. I want to say thank you to all of you who have joined in on the day. It is simple. I'm praying that something was said or done to keep you in some kind of shape, form, or fashion with whatever you're dealing with. If you have financial issues, know that God is well able yes. to restore you. Yes, he is. I don't care what you've lost. He can redeem your pains. He can redeem time. He can redeem everything you've lost. And he can give it back to you overnight. He can yes. give it to you in a blinking of an eye. Yes, he can. Yes. He's a sovereign God. He has the ability to do so. You just got to trust him. Know that God's not oblivious to where you are. Know that he loves you. Know that he has your best interests at heart. Amen, somebody. It is our time to give and share. To those of you who continue to give and share with us online, we do not take it for granted. We thank you that you share with us on a consistent basis to help us continue to do what we do. That is bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to you on a weekly basis. Amen. 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 That we may continue to feel the kingdom of God. Amen. Sometimes we talk about what we cannot afford to do. As it pertains to giving, I tell you, of things that we cannot afford not to do. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That is to give to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you yes, Lord. for this time of giving. Yes, Lord. We ask that none would suffer lack for what they give, but that you would greatly increase us according to your word, 30, 60, even 100 fold. 
We rebuke the devour by name, Satan. Yes, Lord. It's where it says the nations will rise up and call us blessed. Yes. Thank you for the children give us on today, God. Thank you, Lord. It means that we're happy with what we give. Yes, yes. Thank you for the increase. Thank you. In every life here, God, today, every life that's watching. Thank you, Lord. Increase your people. Don't increase this your time. people, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come and your hands. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.